training webinar. We're really excited that you have followed, the, followed us on this training journey. And um, I think like Prof. Mariki said, we really should award a prize to anyone that attended all nine webinars. Um, you all will have access to, to, the, to the recordings to share with your team members for anyone who missed it. So yesterday we, we went over modifying the Stripe HIV online course. Um, and today we're gonna go over uh, how to facilitate it. And this is a typo, so this workshop, I should not confuse you. This is facilitating the Stripe HIV online course um, as this is the, going over the asynchronous course. So today, um, Gina, as, as you all are, are, are familiar with by now, uh, we'll go over how to facilitate the online course. So this will go over how to post announcements, how to, to post and or to use the, the Q&A section, how to interact with learners through discussion posts and activities, and also how to track their participation. Uh, she'll also show you the facilitator training course and resources you can use. She'll show you the play space where you can practice using the course. Uh, and then I will wrap us up with some best practices, the next steps, and Q&A. Um, before we get started, I want to thank you. I want to give a huge thank you to Irenius and Clara for, for organizing all of these. It's been no small feat to, to ensure that you all can get registered and to have these webinars recorded for future use. So thank you. Um, so today, the, the two objectives are to learn how to access the facilitation resources and guidance and learn how to interact with learners. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Gina. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to take a moment to share my screen. And are you seeing the Stripe HIV pilot course? Yes. Okay, great. So um, just a quick introduction. I'm Gina Geiser. I work at UCSF as an instructional designer, and I've been uh, working with the Stripe HIV project to, um, to do the beta pilot and also the online course. And I want to thank uh, the people that have given us feedback so far. Um, we've been able to incorporate some of that and uh, to some new iterations and that I'll show you today. And as we build out the course, we also appreciate the feedback that you have on how it's working for you. Um, so this is a, a sample pilot course that has three modules and I'll kind of go through it a high overview today and show you some details. So um, you'll notice up here on the left, um, this little box with the three bars is really useful. It will hide this navigation bar and also show it. So as I go through, you'll see I actually use this navigation bar quite a bit, and I recommend that you keep it open um, when you're in the course site because it's easier to navigate. Um, I'll kind of go down and quickly show you the components here. So the participants tab will show you everyone that's enrolled in the course. Um, and as a facilitator, you will see their email address and their role and what group they're in. Um, you'll also get some information about you know, if they've been in the course recently or never. So it's helpful to kind of see, you know, the activity uh, on this page. Now we're not really using the grading tab for this because most of the activities are um, tracked by participation and I'll show you that uh, another way. And then um, actually I'm gonna go back to the very top of the course. You'll see here then that, that there are these announcements and question and answer forums at the top. And then each module uh, starts with the overview and then the modules of content are separated out um, with these headings. So you can click into each one to get more content. And at the end, we have the post uh, learner survey and certificate for students that have completed everything. So I'm gonna actually start here with the announcements. Um, so announcements are things that um, the e-learning coordinators or facilitators can use to communicate to students. So these things are coming out from the program out to everybody. 
Um, and so they might be things like welcome to the course or, um, you know, now is the time to go back in and update, uh, you know, responses to a discussion forum or the Zoom session starting soon, things like that. So you'll see this is some one we put in as a test. If you click onto it, you will get um, get the message here. And um, there's an ability also to reply and have a thread about a particular topic if that's needed. Um, let's see. So all of these announcements are go out to students regardless of their notification settings. They will get an email about the announcement. So it might also be helpful to add a link or something specific in the message so that they can go directly to the place that you want them to go. So below is the question and answer forum. So this is something that can be used by anyone in the course. So students can post here, facilitators and e-learning coordinators. So this is where you want to encourage them to report things like, um, you know, where's the Zoom link, <clears throat> excuse me, for instance. Um, and then you could reply right here, you know, and put like, um, Anyway, you could put a link in here and then post that to the forum. And you'll see it, it's nested under their first message. Actually, something I meant to also say, you can also reply privately. So if a student is having a particular problem that isn't appropriate for everyone else to hear the reply, you can just send them something directly. Um, and then the advanced tab you can actually get into the forum settings where you can add attachments and there's a few more um, ways you can respond to students if you need to you can even add media um, a voice message things like that okay so it sounds like um, your facilitator specific items will probably um, be determined by your institution and your program. But I'm going to go over some things that um, probably all facilitators will do. Um, so in the overview section here for students, this kind of tells them about the training, the objectives, the course requirements, things that we'd like them to do for each module. Um, below is the schedule. And by when you're in here, the e coordinator should be um, already determining the schedule of how the uh, training will go. So in this case, this is a template for about a week long training. Um, and so you could, uh, it's possible that they will have some sort of document here that you can use um, to schedule things. Also, we may be using the calendar feature. So down here on the left is the calendar. And this um, is something that you can go to to see, you know, where the Zoom sessions would be, maybe where, which module you're working on on which day. We're going to do it here. It's done in there, but it's at a fee. Yeah. So for now, I want us to set something that is free. And just a reminder for everyone to mute. I will try to. Thank you. Thanks. So um, I just wanted to point out, you can also export this calendar. Um, so if you want to, if there were a lot of things on the Moodle calendar that you would like in your own personal calendar, you can um, export that to your, to Google or Outlook or other types of um, programs here. So that could be uh, quite useful. All right. Um, so I'm going to go into one of the modules. So module four and nine were the first ones we did. And um, I'm going to show you some of the activities that we have created in here. Uh, moving forward, module 17 is, is an example of some other activities that we will have in some of the other modules as they're developed. So first, you'll see this roadmap, uh, which is kind of an overview of each of the activities for that module. And the one um, here is the Zoom activity. So we've had at least at least one of the activities per module will be done on Zoom with you and the students. So the students are to do the pre-knowledge quiz before they do anything else. And we'd like them to do that so that we can kind of get a baseline of their understanding before they interact with the content. 
Um, so the students will um, do that here. Now you'll notice as a facilitator, you're actually not able to take this quiz, but you are able to see their responses. So in this first view, you can see these are sort of the overview questions, um, average answers, how many people responded to each question, and you'll be able to see what the questions are. So this might be uh, useful to you to, to look at, to see what their understanding is before you start the course and to see if there are any things that maybe you need to emphasize or go over in the Zoom session. You can download these if you'd like. Um, the other thing that's uh, useful is this non-respondence tab. So these are people that haven't taken the quiz yet. So this might also be something to take a look at. Um, if you find that you've got people that um, haven't taken it and um, they're starting to interact with the content, you can select their name and send them a quick message. The nice thing about this is it only goes to students that have not completed the quiz. Okay, so navigating the course, there's also these links above, um, which are kind of handy if you want to get back to the main module, for instance. So I like to use those as I'm going through different activities. So these forum activities in module four, there's quite a few, um, and we'd like you to take a look at these as the students are interacting um, with this material. So um, here are the discussion questions that we've asked them. And it's set up so that um, the students will automatically post within their group. So here are the group names, and as long as they are assigned a group, um, they will be able to post to this form. Um, so here's a test entry where we had somebody respond to the forum, and then we had somebody reply. So the students are asked to reply, well, they're asked to post first, and then um, after everyone's posted, re review at least two of other students in their group's postings and then reply to them. So this is a place that you can also um, reply and hopefully get a good discussion going online um, asynchronously before your Zoom call. So again, to reply, this is very similar to the question and answer um, forum. You just simply write your reply in here. The advanced tab is there as well if you want to add more documents and um, you can create a thread. So um, I wanted to just point out the subscribe button. So I think by default, um, everyone will get a notification once um, somebody has posted and replied to this forum, but you can also turn it off. So for instance, if, if somebody has already done what they need to for this um, discussion and they're still getting notifications from other students, um, they might decide to turn that off. So it's something to think about both for yourself if you're getting a lot of email, but also it's possible if they turn it off, the student may not get the email of new, um, new postings. Okay, so the other type of activity here, um, it's called a lesson. And again, you're kind of coming in from the back end, so you're seeing the content, but some of the students will not see these, uh, these top navigation bars, they will just see these slides. So they will go through this content one by one. And answer some questions. They get some immediate feedback on these type questions. They're not graded. Um, there's the reflection that we ask them to do on their own. And some further reading. So you'll see it, these end with this end lesson button um, and students will need to get to the very end to get kind of a check mark for um, credit for that activity. So I'm gonna go back and show you a little bit more about that. Um, so you'll see that, sorry, I'll just zoom down again, there we go. You'll see that there are these um, check boxes um, besides things that we'd like them to do. The actual uh, required things are really just the pre and post tests. Um, however, in, in order for them to do well on the post test, they really do need to go through all the activities. 
So these are sort of just at a glance checkboxes for completion. Um, so as a facilitator, you'll be able to get a bird's eye view of how everyone's doing in the course. So up here at the very top, you'll see that there's this uh, settings wheel right under your name. And if you click on more, under these reports, probably the most useful report you have is the activity completion report. And what this is, is uh, it gives you a list of everybody who's enrolled in the course, their email, and then you'll see each of the activities is listed vertically here. And if a student has completed that activity, they will have a checkbox. And I might note that all of the checkboxes are set up to be automatic, so the student can't manually check the box. They will need to complete the activity um, to get the check mark. So again, if a student doesn't have everything checked, uh, it's not the end of the world, but it might you know, impact uh, their performance on the post test. So it might be things you want to take a look at to see how they're doing. Um, the other important thing at the end here is this post learner survey. Um, this is mostly feedback about the course, but we'd like them to do that before they get their certificate. So this is, you know, how they enjoyed the course, um, what aspects are going well, what could be improved. And you'll notice we actually have one here for facilitators as well. So this one is hidden from students. Sorry, I don't actually have the, um, the view for you to see this one. I think we haven't taken this one yet, I apologize, but it's very similar. It's about, you know, how is it, what components of the course worked well, what could be improved, things like that. And we would really welcome your feedback here. And then at the end, the students, um, if they've done everything, they can um, download their certificate, which will show, you know, which course they took and um, that they've completed everything. Okay, are there any questions so far? Sorry, I've been talking for a while. I'm happy to go back over something or, or look at something. You could use the chat or unmute yourself. If you have a question so far. Okay, well, if you think of something while I'm talking, please use the chat box and I'll go back to it. Um, before I move on, I wanted to show you um, module 17 um, because this is the newest one that we have and um, you'll see it's a little simpler more simplified. Um, and this is probably going to be um, how most of the modules will be set up moving forward. So the roadmap um, consists of a pre-knowledge quiz, one activity, um, a Zoom call, and then the post-knowledge quiz. So the pre and post-knowledge quizzes will be similar. Um, what will be different is this is the activity here. Oops. Sorry, it takes a moment to load. So you'll see that the training for the module sort of opens in its own package. Um, so there's an introduction and students will sort of move through um, using this navigation bar similarly to the um, the Moodle site, but um, it's this is uh, a self-contained lesson as well. So it has all the acronyms, all of the things right here in it. And they will click downwards or using this navigation bar on the left. So we're hoping that this style is more interactive um, and maybe make a little more sense to them. Um, it's also more self-paced, so as a facilitator, you won't have to be monitoring their um, progress as much. You'll be able to see if they've completed it, but they will be able to do this on their own. So you can see some of them um, so have question and answers within it. Um, and then the 
slides and the content is also embedded within this lesson. Users and such. And feedback and things. Okay, I won't go through the whole thing, but that gives you an idea of what those look like. Um, anything else before I move on on the overall content of the course site? Gina, there's a question. Will the certificate be signed? Um, yes, we have, let's see, there we go. The, um, the certificate is signed by two people. Um, it's kind of a template though, and it won't be a wet signature, but yes, it is signed. Let me see who it signs. Yeah. So it's signed by uh, Prof. Abigail Kazimbe as the president of AfriHealth and Ambassador Eric Giesby um, as the lead for the UCSF team. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, if there aren't questions about that, <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to show you a place where you can um, kind of play with this content and take a look at things and um, move things around <clears throat> and open it up. So we've created kind of a duplicate of what I've just shown you um, that's called the play space. And um, of course it has the same modules of content. Um, but what's nice is um, you could go in here and open things up and you know pretend you're a student um, go through the activities, post an introduction, kind of go through each um, item individually, download it, take a look at it. Um, you won't be able to edit on this course, but um, e-learning coordinators will also be in here and sort of playing around and editing. So just keep in mind that not all of this will be exactly the way the final course site is um, because people are in here sort of moving things around. But um, feel free to to go in here and go through all the activities and take a look at, um, at what's here. Um, oh, there is a, another type of activity I, I failed to show you. I, want, I can show you here. There's a couple that require um, working on a worksheet. Um, so here's, here's one, for instance, that it has some instructions about how to, fish, uh, how to fill out a fishbone diagram. And we're asking them to upload it to the discussion topic. So they can look and read through the activity. And then here they click on this and they will download the fishbone diagram worksheet, which has a little more information about filling it out. And then below here, they can insert their own um, text. And um, once they finish doing that, they can save it. And then um, go back to the forum activity here. And they can upload it by adding a new discussion topic. And again, if they are part of a group, then they will upload to their group automatically. So they would put in the, um, uh, one thing I will mention, if they are working in groups for an activity like this, which could be possible, um, they could just upload one of the um, diagrams if they're working together. I think this is required, so I'm just gonna put some text in here. To add the attachment, you'll have to hit advanced, and it'll be right there. And then they can drag the attachment in. Add what group they're in and then post the form. Um, so what I what we've asked them to do if they are in a group is to have one person upload the diagram and then have the other people reply below. That way everyone will have at least one posting. Um, to the forum and then they will get a checkbox. So it would be something like that. 
Okay. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is we have a facilitator training course. Um, and you'll see it looks, it's set up kind of similarly. We have announcements that you might get as a facilitator. Um, there's an overview, welcome to the training course that will show you what's here. Uh, and mostly it's how to set up activities in Moodle, um, guides, um, things to use during your Zoom sessions. Um, so these are things also to take a look at and download. Um, you can look at these individually or download the whole folder at once. Um, we also have, let's see, handouts from Zoom trainings. I believe down here we actually have the uh, webinar recordings also. So if you want to go back and review anything that you've seen, or maybe if you've missed one that you want to watch, you can do that here. Um, but most of these you can see, like, let's say you need to set up a calendar event. There's a video, some of them have um, some handouts and other help articles here. Um, but it'll sort of walk you through how to use Moodle in case there are things that come up that are um, that you haven't done before, you, uh, you haven't seen. So hopefully this will be really useful to you and we'll be adding things to this as we go if there are more things that come up that we'll have questions about. Okay, is there any other questions? You know, there's been some questions and um, I think some of them I, I've put in written answers and I'll address in my slides. Um, there is a question to go back to the online course to show how the certificate um, or like what's required for the certificate and when it's downloaded. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then one of the questions was about accessing the webinar recording. So thank you for showing that. Okay, great. I also believe, I think those are, will be emailed out to one by one, um, but in terms of an archive, they will be kept at the facilitator, facilitator training site. Um, yeah, so uh, this, I set this one up just for the pilot site. So I think once we get more of the modules um, completed and, and sent out um, for you to use, it will be a little clearer of what's actually required for what. But um, you'll see, let me see it. I'll actually go back to module four to show you. So the pre-knowledge quiz is there. And then if you go back down here to the bottom, you'll see that the students aren't able to even see or click on the post-knowledge quiz until they've done the pre-knowledge quiz. Um, and in actuality, we want them to do all the activities as well. But because these aren't graded, um, it's more of just you know a visual cue that they've done all of these things um, because we want them to do well on this post knowledge quiz. So, um, but in actuality, the only required thing is to take the pre knowledge quiz here. Um, so that's the same for all of the modules. And then you'll look down here. Uh, we've asked them to take the post knowledge quiz for these two modules before they can take the survey. Um, so if you think about, they have to take the pretest to take the post-test, now they're taking the post-test. So they won't be able to get in here until they've done those um, activities. And then for the certificate, we're a little more clear that we want them to take the pre and post-test for these modules and the learner survey and the initial Stripe registration survey. Let's see. Do you want to say anything else about that, Cheyenne, in terms of requirements? Yes. So the only way so we know that all sites are choosing different modules. The only way that we can make this work for everyone is to set the core modules one, three, four, and seventeen as required, and link the certificate to the taking of those pre and post quizzes. This is the same thing that was done in year one. However, we don't want you to make that necessarily obvious to your learners and they should take the pre and post quiz for all of the modules that you are selecting uh, in your training program. Um, so please encourage them all to take the modules. We wanna review that data and be able to improve the other modules as well.
Yeah, and I think I think the you know there's many more activities and many more things um, on the online course that that we want them students to do so they do well that aren't required. So there's a little bit of a difference between what's required and what we actually want them to do. So I think as facilitators, that will be kind of your job to help uh, guide them through that, um, to give them time to do each of the activities and answer questions. Um, and hopefully it will be enjoyable for them to go through each of the modules and um, learn about each of the um, topics. Well, I see a question about past marks for the post quizzes. Um, so the post quizzes will record their answers and how well they've done. Um, let's see, I can show you one. Well, it's they're actually very similar to the similar, if not the same, to the pretests. See if we have one that's been filled out. Okay. Um, however, at the end of the post test, the students will also get the answers. So they will get their answers along with the feedback of what the right answers are. Um, so hopefully, even though, even if they don't do as well as we would like, they will still get the answers and the material uh, reinforced the uh, the correct answers at the end. Um, so yeah, we will get a report of how they've done here. And I believe you'll be able to see the, um, let's see, is it listed as one? Sorry. I don't think this one was filled out as well. So you can see the questions here and all of the responses. Yeah, I believe you could download this to see how they do individually. And so there are correct responses um, noted here. So you'll be able to see how they've done overall. Gina, sorry if I missed this, but is there, um, if you already showed this, but is there a way to see who is online at the moment if facilitators are interested in, in seeing who's online? Yeah, so right now we don't have, there are, there is a way to sh have some extra blocks here on the left side that um, have some kind of at a glance uh, views of things, which I don't have set up or turned on right now. But you can always go to the participants tab and then look to see uh, when they have last accessed the course. So um, I understand if you have a lot of students, this isn't the best way to do this because you'd have to scroll down and see everyone. But that is one way to look at it. Um, and that's a good point. We uh, will probably be adding sort of a left hand um, block section with some kind of easy to navigate um, things there. So you'll have an extra search bar for if you want to search forums or things really quickly, and you'll be able to see who's online at the moment. Thanks. Um, if there's no other questions now, I can finish up and then we can um, come back for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Stop sharing. Thank you, Gina. Okay. Oops, not ready. Okay, so there were some questions about timing. Um, and I, th I think uh, hopefully what I have to say will help a little bit. So as you may or may not know, we had three programs pilot modules four and nine, which you saw Gina present. Um, so EAP HIV at Macquarie, Stripe UB at Botswana and Switch at UKZN. And from these pilots, I wanted to share some lessons learned. So we encourage you to start with a Zoom meeting to orient your learners and manage expectations. So in this meeting, uh, you could do some icebreakers with learners, go over the basics of how to use Zoom, and go over the schedule um, and the requirements that will be for the course. For your asynchronous activities, you can encourage your learners to work together in self-formed groups. So if they wanna meet over WhatsApp or Zoom, or even in person, if, it, if it's safe, 
um, we do encourage learners working together. For the Zoom sessions, so there, as a reminder, there's Zoom sessions for every module. Remind all learners to read the materials before they attend that Zoom session. And the participants in the breakout groups should be interprofessional. Um, so yesterday, the e-learning coordinators learned how to make groups in Moodle interprofessional. Um, and whoever is organizing the Zoom session, it should also make sure the breakout groups are, in, are interprofessional. So this will take some, some planning ahead to know who your participants are. Uh, to limit uh, internet use and data, we um, designed the Zoom sessions to, to only be 30 to 40 minutes long. But if there's good connectivity and your learners are available for a longer time, you do have the option to, to lengthen the Zoom sessions. Um, our partners found that having longer time to meet with Zoom really improved the interprofessional interaction. And these Zoom sessions are also an opportunity for facilitators to discuss country specific resources uh, to, to elicit more, more discussion. Um, and finally, uh, a big lesson we learned is that running a module in one to two days isn't, isn't feasible to have interaction, especially when there's a discussion post involved, and that you should really run a module um, in four to seven days. So this is a, a proposed timeline. And so thanks to uh, the programs at McGarry and Botswana for, for landing on, on this suggestion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through it. Um, and so this would be for eight modules in eight weeks. Um, so first, open the course one week early to allow time to complete the registration survey and the pretest all at once. So the pretests are, are, are saved per module. Um, and you know, ask your learners that they just go ahead and, and before the course, um, before they even begin the course to go through each of the modules that you will be going over and take those pre-tests. And then taking those pre-tests and taking the registration survey will open up the post-test of, of the modules. Um, and allow learners multiple days for the asynchronous activity. So that's for modules four and nine, that is the discussion post, the, the, the lesson, and for all of the other modules, it will look like module 17, where they will go through a series of, of problems. Um, and so you really wanna allow them the multiple days to either work together, to respond to discussion posts. Um, facilitators should respond to discussion posts on the last asynchronous day and definitely before the Zoom day. And then facilitators should prepare for the Zoom day. Um, so you'll notice on this schedule, uh, learners are given three days for the asynchronous activity, and then there's a Zoom day, um, and this is where facilitators should, should be prepared to, to elicit discussion. Um, definitely on the activity that is discussed on the Zoom day, but also anything that you may have seen in the discussion post, you know, if, you're, if there's anything, if there's inter an interesting discussion that you want to go back to, or anything that, um, anything you want to correct. Um, and then five, and so uh, each each uh, module would end with the, the post test and you should allow uh, give time for that. And then at the very end of the the, the multi week series, you should remind learners to take the learner survey um, and after they have completed all the all the pre test the post test and that learner survey they will be able to download their certificate. You can also have this wrap up this wrap up session just to cover everything that was that was discussed over over the course. Um, as a reminder, please take the post course facilitator survey. Um, this helps us improve the the program for you, for you all and for your learners. Uh, so next steps. Um, so as of this morning, your time, I've emailed out the facilitate, facilitator tokens to almost all of the PIs and PDs and training coordinators. There are a few schools that were awaiting additional information um, or if translation is needed. Um, other than that, I, I think about 75% of, of the program directors have received the facilitator token. Um, so using that facilitator token and the instructions provided, 
you can register on the, the, the LMS. You can review the facilitator training course and also practice in the play space. Um, and then beyond that, you are awaiting instructions from your PI, PD, uh, or the training coordinator uh, on, on your training schedule. Um, now, we, in the next two weeks, you will see more modules like 17 get added to your, to your online course. Um, and so in the next two weeks, what we're asking you to do is focus on reviewing the materials in the training course and practice in the play space. Um, so now we have more time for questions. I am going to take a second and review a question in the or some questions in the chat box. Um, oh, Dr. Shuno, you, you, I had two days of post test on the same module. Let me maybe see if that was a mistake. Um, okay, so for this schedule, what I have is, you know, one module uh, a week. So week one would be module one, week two would be module two, and the post test should be, you should provide time for the post test to be completed um, at the end of that week. Um, can, can the learners do all pretests in one day? Yes, that is the best practice that we want to encourage. Um, Gina, do you have, would it be easy for you to share your screen? Could um, I have you show how a learner could, could see the pretest for modules four, nine, and 17, and then take them all at once? Give you a second to yeah. get there. Yeah, I mean, I'm realizing it's not, it's not, um... Not like they go to one place to do it they will have to go through each module um, but i think our thinking there is that there is a lot of content that's um, available uh, on the front of each module so to really get a pre-knowledge assessment it'd be great if they could go through and take these one by one um, it will also give them a little bit of an overview of like how each module is set up so under it's the first uh, activity here. Are you, can you share your screen? Oh, are you not seeing it? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. So let me go back to where I was. I thought you were seeing it. Um, yeah, so in each module here, if they go to module four, they will have to scroll down below the roadmap the activities. So they will go one by one through each module to take the pretest. Um, but it will give them a little bit of an overview of what's, what's in each one. I guess our thinking is that if they don't take them all at once, it's possible that they could glean some knowledge, you know, by going through some of the trainings and um, we won't get an accurate pre-knowledge assessment um, but essentially, we, we certainly want them to do it before they do any of the activities or lessons within the module. Does that answer your question? Thanks, Gina. Um, you can um, you can leave your screen share just in case there's other questions. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a question on the availability of resources, uh, so like the PDF materials. Um, so we are not restricting access to any of the PDFs based on the timing of the test or the, the, um, the modules that are opened. And so we believe that just allowing all the resources to be used um, for the activities, for the Zoom sessions is, is best. And instead of you know, restricting access to materials um, as they go through, so this is why it's also really important that in the very beginning, you just ask that they take all of the pretest. Um, Gina, I really like your description of, of why we chose to do this. Um, I think it has to do with like adult learners. Um, but would you like to share anything related to how we're not restricting access to materials? 
Yeah. So with Moodle, it's, it's, it's possible, but it's also kind of cumbersome. And, um, and I think once we started to put restrictions on things, we realized it could become an access issue because I have seen quite a few comments about um, learners using mobile phones or tablets or other devices. So I think we wanted to keep this sort of as simple and straightforward as possible. Um, and there is a kind of a linear design to it all. So if they start at the top and they move down, they'll, they'll go through all of the activities and complete everything that's being asked of them. Um, it would be great to get some feedback around that because I know as facilitators, you may have a lot of students and if people are falling behind and not doing what they're supposed to do at this time that you want them to do, it can be problematic. So it's possible to build in reminders and restrictions so that they do things in order. Um, but ultimately this is, um, you know, they are adult learners and we hope that they, they want to learn the material and we'll go through it quickly and easily and um, do well at the end. Thanks, Gina. <laughs> um, there's a question about what modules will be available and when. So by June 1st, we will have modules one, three, four, five, eight, nine, eleven, and seventeen available. So if you are doing training it's in June, um, you will have those modules to choose from. We also hope to have the COVID module, uh, the updated COVID module by then. Um, if your if your trainings are later, so July, August, I thought I know, although I know that might make you nervous since the project ends in September, additional modules will be available um and by the end we'll have all 17 modules available we recognize that we might not have given you enough time to to do all of them but um as as prof mariki has addressed on an earlier webinar the goal is that this course lives beyond september um and will be able to use in the future um, i will put those modules in the chat box um let me see i think okay I, th I think i've got we've gotten through all the questions in the chat box are there any others um let me put in the modules that will be available okay um if there's no other questions I, oh, um, yes, so the Moodle app, there is a Moodle app. Um, it can be downloaded on um, the phone and then material can be downloaded and used for offline use. I also know a few of you are doing a mix of, of in-person, um, where you might have learners come to campus and spread out on campus and then and have times for, for learners to, to use the um, either the asynchronous course uh, or this online course material or to meet for the Zoom session. Uh, I would like to add to, um, because I know there was a concern about network uh, poor network or um, you know lack of devices. Um, so we have tried to design the core site so that it can be done with low bandwidth. For instance, there's very few of any videos and things that would require like a really strong Wi-Fi network. And also wherever possible, we've created PDFs that open in a new window so that it could just be viewable on a phone rather than uh, forcing them to download attachments and things that you know might get lost or or not even work. Um, there are, as you saw, a few activities where we're asking them to do that. So I mean, ideally, they would have access to a laptop or a tablet at some point during the training, or maybe in a group. But I would say most of the um, most of the activities are viewable um, on a phone, either through an activity on Moodle or um, through a PDF that they can look at online. Thanks, Gina. Okay, so Gina, if you will stop sharing your screen and if as many people as possible come off on video, 
Um, I want to take a screenshot. So there's there's 109 so, people on today, which is exciting. Yeah, Shine. So uh -huh. um, yeah, so just a note on the webinar evaluation link. Uh, I think people should try the second link that has just been posted, and then see if it works for you. We will again send the same link to people in the via email for you to give us feedback on how this webinar went. Thanks, Irenius. As, as people are, are getting ready mm -hmm. and turning their videos on, I will answer this question. Um, so is it possible for learners to record their videos and upload to the platform? Um, so good question. So if someone is responding to a discussion post, they might not want to type a long discussion post, so they can upload an audio or video file to, to Moodle. Thanks, Gina. All right. I know there's more of you willing to put your video on. Have you seen the Almost. I still have, have four back? black screens. Irenius, who is who has the Afri Health Secretariat video? Um, I think that that's Clara. Clara, we want to see your face. Uh, we to see uh, our face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I need, still need three more people. Oh no! Okay, how do I do that? Okay, it's actually I. I'm I, fine. Very enjoyable, well understood. <laughs> I think the problem is um, very okay, someone, interesting. Someone needs to tell me how I get all the videos on my front screen. Okay. Is there a way to is there a way to do that? The gallery view, the gallery view should do that. Oh, okay, I got it. Okay, um, now I'm gonna <laughs> slowly. Okay, smile. <laughs> uh. Okay, I got it. Um, thank you everyone for entertaining me. <laughs> um, thank you everyone for sticking with us. Um, you know, we're like two months of training. Uh, I'm really excited for you all to get started. Okay, bye. Thank you. <laughs> thanks everyone. Thanks to AfriHealth for the partnership. Bye. Thank you.